Good afternoon, this is Mr. McGee with IB Biology, and today I'd like to talk to you about one of the most fundamental and important statistical tests in all of science, and that is a student's t-test, also known as a t-test for short. Well, what is a t-test? We don't need to get too far into the background, but it was first invented in 1908 by a gentleman named William C. Lee Gosette. He worked for the Guinness Company in Ireland, and they were testing different varieties of barley, and he wanted to know was there a significant difference in their experiments. And to eliminate bias, he created the t-test. Because he wasn't allowed to use his real name when he published it, he used a pen name and called himself Student. And to this day, we call it Student's t-test rather than Gosette's t-test. But enough of that, what is the purpose of a t-test? It actually has one simple purpose. It looks for significant difference between two sets of data. And that's all it does. It eliminates our bias when we write a conclusion and tells us is the data significant or not significant. For example, I have class grade, well, my class grade book, and if we were to look at it, one of my classes has an 80% average, but another one of my classes has an 83% average. Some people may say that that is a significant difference, and some people may say it's not very significant. And the problem is, in science, we want to be objective. We want to eliminate our bias, and we want one mathematical number that will tell us, is the 83% significantly larger than the 80%? Uh, and it helps us get rid of that bias. Now, there's no question that the 83% is larger, but when we look at all the students, it could be just because there's a couple outliers in the other class dragging down the average and thus not rendering the other class significantly worse. So that's why we do the t-test, is it allows us to get rid of this middle schooler mentality that you just look at the mean to see if something is larger or not. We in the greater, I would say the, the more advanced sciences, we don't just look at the mean anymore. You want to get rid of doing that. We want to look at t-testing to see is there a significant difference. And what a t-test is going to do is it's going to give us a critical value. It's going to give us a probability. And we call this a p-value. Now what we're looking for is, is the data significantly different? Or is it just random and it's not really much different af after all? What we want is a critical value. Um, or I'm sorry, what we want is a value that is smaller than the critical value of 0.05%. What this means here, or I should say just uh, 5% or 0 0.05, what this critical value indicates here is that there is a less than 5% chance that the data is random, but greater than 95% chance that the data is significant. What if you had a p-value that was greater than 0.05? Well, what this is saying is that you have a greater than 5% chance that the data is just random and less than 95% confidence that the data is truly significant. And so when you calculate your t-test, you're looking to see is it greater or less than the critical value because this indicates the probability that the data is just random and that there's no significance. So we want as much confidence as possible and we want a very small p-value to tell us it's not random, it's actually significantly different. Let's take a look at an example here. Let's say you did a calculation and you found, uh, let's say you did a p-value of 0.52. Is that significantly different or not? And the answer is, it is not significant. This means there is a 52% chance that the data you have is random and only a 48% confidence that the data is significant. Now, it is possible that there is a significant difference, but 48% is not an acceptable uh, standard in science. We want a 95% confidence interval when you look at uh, scientific uh, studies. We want greater than 95% uh, confidence. So how do we look into this a little further? Make sure you understand what a bell curve is. It is a normal distribution of data, and you can see there's usually a mean right around the peak, and there are the outliers on the outside. A standard deviation is nothing more than the normal spread 
or the normal volume of data that occupies from the mean. So most people, when you look at data, they fall within this range, 68%. And 95% of your data would fall within this range here. Anything outside of that is actually our what we would call an outlier. And so I'll put this down here. You don't need to worry about these numbers, but just be aware that anything in these ranges is usually considered normal. Let's say you were to look at the average uh, height of people in a classroom. You would find most people fall within two standard deviations from the uh, mean height. But of course, there are always some outliers that are there as well. And this accompanies 99.9% .9 of the entire class because there are even greater outliers out there. What a t-test does is it looks at not only the mean, but the spread of our standard deviation. And we ask ourselves, whoops, sorry, two fundamental questions before we do a t-test. Are you conducting a one or two-tailed t-test? And is the data paired or unpaired? Well, let's look at that first question. Is the test one or two-tailed? What we mean by that is really how open-ended is our hypothesis or our question that we're asking. Let's say I was looking at a height difference between girls and boys. If I ask the question, is there a significant difference between the height of girls and the height of boys? I'm making it a very open-ended question, and I could look for an answer in either direction that girls or boys could be taller. But let's say I rephrase that same question, saying boys are significantly taller than girls, or are boys significantly taller than girls? Now I've opened the question, or I've closed the question in one direction, and that means that we are doing a one-tailed t-test. So likewise, if I was looking at my grade book, if I asked the question of, um, does second block have higher grades, or more significantly higher grades than first block does? That's a one-tailed question, because I'm asking it in relation to second block. But on the other hand, if I rephrase the question and said, uh, is there a significant difference between first and second block? Well, now, again, we can look in either direction, and our hypothesis or our question is more open-ended than it was initially. And so that would become a two-tailed t-test. So make sure you ask yourself, are you conducting one or two-tailed t-test? And then the next one, is the data paired or unpaired? To prepare this, I have two separate tables here, and let's look at the data. Suppose a class went out and they sampled their um, heights from the, from the students and you got boys' heights right there and girls' heights right there. What pairing means is that these two sets of data would be linked in each row. And in this case, uh, there is no linkage here. This is actually going to be unpaired. And I'll show you what I mean by um, pairing here in, in this table. Let's say we looked at boys' heights, but we're looking at the same boy at age 5 and at age 15. Well, if you think about it, these are paired. This data corresponds to the same individual. Let's say his name is Jonah. And let's say this boy's name is Zach, and this boy's name is Elliot, and this boy's name is Sam. As you can see, it's paired data. You wouldn't want to switch the table around at all because the numbers need to be lined up with each other. This is what we call paired data. So again, unpaired data doesn't correspond to anything. The numbers can be swapped or, or you know, arranged largest to smallest even. For instance, I'll do this here, arrange it largest to smallest. And you can see I just made the girls data largest to smallest, and it doesn't really matter because it's not linked with any of the boys. But if you can't do that with the um, other table because they're paired and it would affect your results or the meaning of it if you were to arrange these differently, then it would be paired. And that's really just something that takes some getting used to, but it's really quite a simple concept. So again, ask yourself, is it one or two tailed? And is your data paired or unpaired? Let's look at some uh, examples of this here. This is test scores I gave at the beginning of my class, and I call it a pretest. I later give the exact same test to the same students, and we call this the post test. 
So if you take a look, this student got a 32%, which is pretty bad, but he got it at the beginning of the year before he learned anything. Later, he got a 96%, which is obviously really good. So ask yourself those questions. Is the data paired or unpaired? And the answer is this is paired because this belongs to one student here. And again, I could put a name here. Let's say this is uh, Josh. And let's say this belongs to a girl named Sally. And this belongs to a girl named Sarah. I'm just making names up on the spot. But if that's the case, and they belong to their uh, respective sample here, this is paired. So we answer that question. The next part we want to ask is, uh, we want to ask yourself, are we doing a one or two tailed t-test? And here's my question I'm asking. Is there a significant difference between the test scores at the beginning and end of the year? Because I'm, I'm just asking, is there a significant difference? This is going to be actually a two-tailed t-test. On the other hand, if I was to ask the question, did the end of the year perform significantly better than at the beginning, then we are doing a one-tailed t-test because we would be just looking at the uh, looking at the end of the year test. But because we asked it open-ended like this, it's going to be a two-tailed t-test. And again, that means we are looking, uh, as a two-tailed t-test, we can look in either direction for the answer. So um, let's go ahead and do a t-test. I'm going to click on an open cell. You can click anywhere you want. I already filled this p-value in there uh, a while ago. And click up here on function. You're going to have to come under here and look up statistical tests. But because it's under my most frequently used, I just come here and go to t-test, or t.test. Now I'm on Microsoft Excel 2013, by the way. To do your t-test, you want your two sets of data. Array 1 will be our preset, and Array 2 will be our post set of data. We said this is going to be a two-tailed t-test, and we said this is going to be a um, paired test as well, because the data is paired. And that means we're going to enter 1 for the code down here. Our p-value is 1.6975 times 10 to the negative 24th power. Now, I'm not going to, uh, I, well, I guess I can do this real quick. I don't know if that's the exact number of zeros, but if you take a look at it, th this is a really small number. And ask yourself, is our p-value significant or is it not? And the answer is, this is very significant. We have an extremely low probability that the data is just randomly like this. And we have an extremely high confidence, greater than 99.99999% confidence that the data is significantly different. Which is good because it means my students actually learn something throughout the year. Let's look at another set of data here. These are some grasshoppers, and we did some measurements. We weighed the grasshoppers, and we're asking ourselves, is there a significant difference between the mass of the male and the mass of the female grasshoppers? And this is what we got on our distribution. They look about the same, and one person may say, well, the males were higher on average, but again, we don't care so much about the mean. We want the t-test to tell us were the results significantly different or not. So again, to do this, we we'll click on a cell anywhere you want. I just happen to put the p equals there just for demonstration purpose. And again, you go here to your statistical test, or it will already be under your most recently used t.test, and you highlight your two sets of data. I'm going to highlight all my males. Make sure you do not highlight your mean or standard deviation if you have that in there, just the raw data. And then you go to array 2, and you highlight that. And the question is saying, is there a significant difference between them? That is a two-tailed question. Again, if we were to reword it and say, are the males significantly larger, that would be a one-tailed question. But we're not. We're just asking an open-ended question like that. And then as far as the type, we're asking, are they paired or unpaired? And if you take a look here, would we put a name or something specific over there? Can we rearrange the numbers, and would it affect uh, the meaning of our results? And the answer is no. These are not paired together. We just went out and got a random, uh, I think, 20 samples from each male and female. And it doesn't matter what order they're in, and they really don't correspond at all to each other. This is unpaired. 
And if you look here at our key, um, unpaired is going to be 3. So we're going to enter 3 down there. And therefore, our p-value is 0.08, round it roughly. Ask yourself, is that a significant difference? Are the males or females significantly different than the other? And the answer is no. There is no significant difference. There is a probability of about an 8.3% chance that the data is random, but an almost 93-94% chance that the data is significant. But in science, we want that 95% confidence interval. Okay, This here is simply not to the threshold. Let's look at another set of data. Oh, and by the way, for a t-test, you need a minimum 10 samples in order to conduct this. So luckily, we have more data there. I have a lot more than 10 samples here, so we're golden in this case too. But take a look at the grade book. Two different classes I have, first and second block. I didn't lay label it appropriately up there, but the question is, is there a significant difference between the final grades of first and the final grades of second block? And uh, of course, that makes it a two-tailed uh, question that we're asking. And ask yourself too, is this a paired t-test? Are these numbers paired to each other? Would they correspond to any name or any value over there? And the answer is no. In fact, if you look at it, I've already arranged everything from uh, smallest to largest. So it really doesn't matter. They are not paired together. The numbers are just kind of thrown in there in any particular order. So notice their averages. It looks like my second block did better on their average, but we don't care what the mean means. We want a t-test to tell us the value. Go here again to t-test, and we highlight our array one, which is just our raw data for our first class. Notice this class doesn't have as many students in it, and that doesn't matter. As long as you have 10 students or 10 samples for whatever data set you have, you will develop a nice enough bell curve to make your t-test more accurate. I'll highlight my array two. And again, we were asking a two-tailed question because we're just saying, is there a significant difference? If we were to ask, does second block, is second block significantly better than first block? Uh, then that would be one tail, but we're not asking that. And of course, this is unpaired, and that means we're going to use three. And by the way, if you look closely here at this um, two sampled equal variance, that is a rare example. We're not going to worry about that too much. Almost always, we're going to pick either one or three. But here's our p value 0.534%. So, what do you think? Is there a significant difference between the grades of my first and second block? If you were a middle schooler, you may look at the mean and say, yes, that is significantly larger. Uh, or you may say, no, that's only about 1%, not a big deal. The t-test will do the talking for us. Not to mention, if you look at the bell curve, it looks like there's more red for my second block in the higher percentage range. And it looks like my first block, the blue class, is a little more shifted to the lower end of the range. However, that is relatively deceiving. The P value is telling us there is a 53% chance that this is just random in the way it appears. And there is an almost 47% chance that there is a significant difference. So it is possible that there is a significance, but in science we want 95% confidence that it is significant. And therefore, I would cite this in my conclusion, not significant. The Lubber Grasshopper, I would cite this and say very close, but not significant. And in the first one, the I would say, I would cite this result, P equals this, and I would say significant, very significant. I guess I didn't add the right number of zeros in that that first time. So that is all a t-test is. It's comparing two sets of data, and we're asking ourselves, is it paired or unpaired? And we're asking ourselves, is it uh, two-tailed or one-tailed t-test? That really is all there is to it. There is more to understanding it and definitely more to the statistics behind. But as far as doing this appropriately in the course, this is all you need to know at this point. Any questions, please send me a message. But remember, you are responsible for calculating this appropriately and citing your p-value when you come to a conclusion. Thank you. This is Mr. McGee.